up y'all it's Courtney and today's video we're going to take a look at how to use the Rolly Seaboard Rise 2 with Logic Pro X. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the Rolly Seaboard Rise 2 via Bluetooth in my Mac. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how we do that. First thing we need to do is go to the finder search bar and type in audio MIDI setup and then go to window and click on show MIDI studio. And then you're gonna click on the Bluetooth icon. Make sure your Rise 2 is on. And now all we have to do is click connect. It's connected so we can go ahead and close out of this. Now let's open up Rolly dashboard. Make sure that it's selected MPE on the mode. Now let's open a new instrument track in Logic. We're gonna open Alchemy. If it doesn't have alchemy right here, you just search in this little bar right here and then you select alchemy. And now we're going to hit create. Now let's just test out and see how this sounds right out of the box without doing anything in logic. So the notes play, but there isn't really any of the functionality of the Seaboard. So let's go ahead and change that. If you click this little drop down menu on Alchemy, you're going to change this MIDI mono mode from off to on with the common bass channel one. We're also going to change the mono mode pitch range to 48. Hop back over to the Rolly dashboard and make sure your pitch bin range is also 48 there. That way they are matching. Now let's go ahead and play the Seaboard and see how it sounds now. So the pitch bin function is now working and we're able to utilize it. Along with Alchemy, you can also use this feature with the EFM1, the ES2, the Quick Sampler, the Retro Synth, and the Sculpture plugin, as well as the Vintage Clav. So I'm gonna pull up a couple more of those and show you how to do it again. Same thing, just click on this little arrow here, MIDI mono mode to on, bass channel one, make sure that it's set to 48. Now let's take a look at the ES2 synthesizer. Same thing, just click here, MIDI mono on, it's on 48. But my favorite way to use the Rolly Seaboard Rise 2 with Logic is to use the Rolly Studio Player, which comes with the Rise 2 if you were to order it. So let's go ahead and pull up the Rolly Studio Player. Let's change this from Alchemy, go to Rolly, Rolly Studio Player to Stereo. So the reason I like the Rolly Studio Player so much is because it combines all of your Rolly sounds into one VST. So it's easy to search through sounds and find the exact sound that you're looking for. So let me go ahead and show you how to use the filter feature to find those sounds. First thing I'm gonna do is select MPE and I'm gonna go explore sounds. Let's say we're looking for a keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and go to keys. And then as you see, like up at the top, it says Equator. So these are all the keyboard sounds from Equator that I have. These are all the keyboard sounds from Equator 2 that I have. These are all the keyboard sounds that I have for Strobe 2. And these are all the keyboard sounds I have from Cypher 2. So all of these plugins in one plugin, it's so convenient. It's one of my favorite features. So let's go ahead and just pick out a random sound. Let's go with a granular piano. It sounds pretty cool, so let's go ahead and see what it sounds like. So now let's go back to the plugin and look at some of these features. As you can see, these three faders right here match the three faders that are on the Seaboard Rise as well as the XY pad. So let's go ahead and edit those and see how it changes the sound of this. Now let's go ahead and move on to the smart chords. Let's go ahead and toggle it on. I'm gonna leave it on this scale of D flat major, 
but as you see right here, it says triad. These are little faders that you can actually change the chord type. So if we toggle this little fader and move it up or down, we can change those chord types from seven, six, sustain fourth, triads, all the way up to elevenths. So let's go ahead and stick with seventh chords because I really like the way that those sound. They're really full chords without sounding too muddy. All right, let's go ahead and play this out so you can hear what it sounds like. You also have the option to add a bass note. So let's hear what that sounds like. As well as the ability to invert the chords. And lastly, we can add a strum as well. So let's go ahead and see what that sounds like. So that smart chord feature essentially works as a chord generator. As you can see, it's a really nice feature. If you don't quite know like a melody or a chord progression that you want to play, this is a great starting place so you can have something to build off of. Now let's move on to the next part of this plugin, which is the multi-layer arpeggiator. So let's go ahead and toggle that on. I'm just going to play it with this preset that it has on it so you can hear what it sounds like. So as you can see, this arpeggiator has three different layers and it starts with basically changing the number of hits. So let's go ahead and take that from 16 to 10. Offset it by two. Let's change the rate from 1 16th to 1 8th. Let's add another octave to it. We can also change the direction of what the notes are played. So like you can go up and down, down and up, up, up and down. Let's check out down, down, up. Add a swing to it as well. Let's go ahead and mess with the layer two on this. Let's change this to, well, let's say 12 hits. Let's change it to dotted set of straight notes. And if we really want to get crazy with some layers, let's add layer three and let's add four hits to this. Let's change the rate from 1 16th to 1 4th. So there are a lot of textures going on with that. As you can see, it went from, let's take all of that off, the multi-layer arpeggiator and the smart chords. So by just adding those two features, we were able to sculpt a completely different sound. Let's go ahead and add them back so you can hear it again.
And we can also add audio effects as well. So let's go ahead and toggle that on and I'll drag this little cursor around so you can hear it in real time. So those are the ways that I use the Rolly Seaboard Rise 2 within Logic. You can also use the Rise 2 with Omnisphere and Serum. I have a video going over how to use the Seaboard with Omnisphere. I'll link it above up here so you can click on that and check it out. If you have any questions about the Rise 2 or Rolly in general, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you'd like to learn more about the Seaboard Rise 2, I'll leave a link in the description box below. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching this video. I have a little cold that I'm getting over, so that's why I sound a little congested. So thank you for sticking with me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.